Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. Now, I'm not going to read uh, the scriptures today for the sake of time. Um, but if you read the first few chapters of Esther, um, you can get a really detailed uh, description of what I'm about to uh, paraphrase. Um, basically, what's happening is there was a king. Um, he was throwing a party, and he asked his, uh, his queen to come and join the party. And the queen said, no, I'm not going to come join the party. Um, basically uh, disobeying the king, even though he sent um, his servants to go give her a direct order to join the party, she still refused. And she disobeyed the king. And because she disobeyed, he took away her crown as queen. And, and because, you know, all of his uh, advisors told him, you know, you know if, if you allow your, your queen to get away with disobeying you, then all the rest of the wives and throughout all of our land and all our whole country, all of the women are going to start thinking that being disobedient to their husbands is okay to do. So basically, he said, okay, well, send, uh, find, go find me a young virgin who will be obedient to me and um, who can be a really good queen to set a good example. Well, that's who Queen Esther was. You know, she was the obedient young virgin uh, who pleased the king. And she and um, she became queen. Well, I read a statistic the other day that said in the 1950s, 60 percent of churches, or excuse me, 60 percent of the United States population attended church. It didn't matter what um, church uh, they attended, but um, or you know what uh, denomination. But 60 percent of the population in the 1950s attended church, whereas today. That, that number has dropped dramatically to only 20%. Only 20% of uh, the population today attends church. So ch church attendance is way down. So I want to talk about this today, guys. And specifically, I want to ask the question, are women married to the government? Are women married to the government? Um, this is my question for the day. Now, way back in the 40s, um, when women's suffrage started happening, you know, women um, really pushed for the right to vote, right? And, you know, they went crying to Big Daddy government. Um, just like nowadays, women go crying to Big Daddy government saying, hey, you know, we want equal rights. We want um, equal pay. We want, you know, whatever it is that they want, you know, reproductive rights. You know, they always go to Big Daddy government to ask for, um, uh, for his approval or whatever, right? Now, it used to be in the old days, you know, government wasn't so big. If you wanted something, you would go down to your local church, you know. You would talk to people. You would look at them in the eyes and say, hey, how's it going? You know, how can I help you? You know, how could you help me? You know what I mean? And you would build a community, you know, where people depended on each other. You know, they developed trust and support. And that community was built at the local level, you know. And at the same time, you know, the church would preach morality, you know, what, what's right, what's wrong. And, you know, everybody would kind of look at each other and, 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 and they'd keep each other in check that way, right? It was like a built-in system for, you know, it, it just all worked. Everybody helped each other out and uh, everybody got what they needed. And, and, you know, nowadays we lost all that, right? And I want to read, read for you a scripture out of the um, New Testament in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. It says, Dare any of you, having a matter against one another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye worthy, or excuse me, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels, how much more things that pertain to this life? See, the Bible says, that the church, you know, the local community of believers, your peers, the people you see every Sunday, you know, these are the people who should be setting, um, uh, setting, settling disputes amongst each other, right? Not the government, you know, especially not um, people who don't believe in God, you know, not strangers that you've never seen before, right? But nowadays, you know, we see women are quick to go to the government system. They're quick to go to the divorce courts. Why? Because it favors the women right? It favors the women. 
and so is it any surprise that that's where they go you know but i you know i ask why you know why have we stopped going to church you know i mean i still go to church you know even though i know that you know most of the modern churches are all watered down you know in some way shape or form especially here in the big city you know because they don't want to lose their numbers they don't want people to stop going you know they they want you to keep giving them money and things like this right so they they water down the message as to not preach too hard but anyway that's another sermon um but i believe you know in the old days you know you you used to have to rely on god you know you used to have to be a good person you used to have to um be righteous um and do the right thing otherwise you know the people in your community the people you see every day at church you know they'd be holding you accountable right you'd have to you'd have to look everybody in the eye on sunday and 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 and, you know, there wasn't so much sleeping around and there wasn't so much lying and cheating and adultery because, you know, if you broke up with somebody, you know, you'd have to see them every Sunday, right? But nowadays, big daddy government, <laughs> people just sleep around, they commit adultery, and you know what? It doesn't matter because you never have to see that person ever again, right? You know, they just run away and they go hide in the shadows. You know, church used to be the pillar of the community. You know, it used to mean something. You know, but I think, you know, modern church has be, has been replaced by big daddy government. You know, that's where we get our rules from now. You know, that's not where I get my rules from. I still get them from the Bible, but you know what I'm saying, right? Government is where we get our morality now. You know, government's where we go to for support when we're broke or we, you know, we're hungry, right? You see, you can't really have separation of church and state. Right, because the church has laws, it has rules, it has commandments that we're supposed to obey and follow. Right? Sound familiar? That's exactly what the government has. Let me give you an example of uh, one law that the Bible has. Um, if you read First Corinthians chapter fourteen, the Bible says, "Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law." And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. <laughs> Whoa, big, big, that's big, that's going to hit the feminist right where, where, where it hurts, right? You know, see, the Bible says women aren't even allowed to speak in the church. They're not allowed to have any authority in the church, you know, but feminism has a new agenda. You know, they said, no, 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 big daddy government, you know, they give us women equal rights, equal authority under the law, you know? But what? But what we? What would have happened in that story that I talked about in the beginning if the king were to allow his queen to just disobey? If the king said, you know what? Now nah, it's okay to, uh, for um, wives to be disobedient, right? It's okay for the queen to um, disobey my command, right? You know. Then all the thing, all the women around would think that they can do that, right? Does that sound familiar to you guys? Am I am I making any sense right now, right? You know, the Bible teaches that us men are to be servants of God. We're supposed to be righteous and in obedience to God, God's commandments, you know, and women, they're supposed to be submissive to their own husbands, right? Chaste and keepers at home. But the um, but big daddy government has taken over the role of God. And it's now the new church, big daddy church, big daddy government church, right? And big daddy tells the women, no, 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 you don't have to obey your husbands. In fact, go ahead and divorce them for any reason. If, 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 you, if you're unhappy, if you're bored, just get rid of them. Go on to the next one, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. There's no such thing as adultery. That's perfectly fine, you know? You see, guys, the point of my video today is this. I'm, I'm not here to tell you what to believe in, who to believe in, or, you know, what God to worship, or, you know, what church to go to, whatever, you know? But it seems to me that um, back when churches had power, you know, back when men submitted themselves to God, submitted themselves um, to the commandments of the Bible, you know, women were in their proper role. Things were running smoother, right? But nowadays, you know, you can't even, you can't even take a wife. You can't even get married without permission from big daddy government, you know. Without that, without that um, permission slip, that government license, society won't even con consider you married, right? So I ask you guys. Was it really worth it? You know, this so-called separation of church and state that people think they have, you know, was it really worth it? Or is the government simply just the new church? You know, instead of believing in the God of the Bible, now we all just collectively take a vote on which commandments that we want, right? 
something to think about, guys. Anyway, that's my video for the day. Um, I hope the Holy Spirit um, reached you and touched you. And anyways, as usual, I'm going to give God the last word. But uh, you guys have a good day, and uh, this is Sean Elvis signing off. Take care. Peace. The Bible says in Esther chapter 1, verse 21 and 22. And this saying pleased the king and the princes, and the king did according to the word of, Mem of Memucan. And he sent letters into all the king's provinces, into every province according to the writings thereof, and to every people after their language, that every man should bear rule in his own house. Amen.